Okay guys, welcome to this recap video of my match with John Stuckey, which I played yesterday. Um, I decided not to stream it because um, I felt like I needed to focus uh, for the match. Uh, but um, I thought it would be nice to give you some thoughts uh, afterwards on, uh, on my play. And um, also um, I will try to um, build in some moments where you can pause the video and then try to find the checkmate sequence or um, a really strong move. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think of this concept. I, I might try to do it some more and also with some other instructional uh, videos, checkmating patterns, stuff like that. If you're interested in that, I can try to make time to do that as well. Okay, so John Stuckey, um, strong player. He is 2400 rated as we, as we see. Um, he was around uh, my seat as well in the in the in the bracket. I think he is 15th seat and I was 18th seat. So uh, a nice matchup. And John Stuckey usually plays quick time control, so as I expected him to be quick um, in the time scrambles. Um, but apart from that, I think I was slight favorite going into this match because three plus two is more my suit than his. Um, but without further ado, let's go to the first game and he started with white and my match strategy was to play knight f6 knight c6 d5 against these lines uh, against e4 so here we have the first couple of moves and this is going to be my setup and here he takes d5 uh, is is a move but the most common move is e5 and he played e5 so um i went knight e4 and he and there's a couple of options here knight e2 bishop d3 bishop e5 f3 also played uh, but he went with a less common bishop e3 and here i played a6 to prevent bishop b5 and probably it's a bit too slow to play this but um it turned out okay in this match i think developing the bishop probably is a bit better instead of a6 he traded on e4 instead of continuing development and already we get a really tense position here <coughs> um, it doesn't look so tense but if i just lose this pawn without any compensation um, that is probably a bad thing for black and also the knight can jump into g5 next and uh, all kinds of ideas are already going uh, at f7 or e6 uh, classic uh, e4 e6 ideas for white here so after uh, almost a minute thought i decided to defend the pawn with queen d5 and it's a bit risky to put the queen in the open like this uh, early on in the game and i think the the best continuation here for white was to just harass the queen like this or like so Uh, but uh, John Stuckey um, went for a pawn move and you could also go for c4 here instead of his plays played f3 but c4 is I think a bit too greedy let's just check c4 queen a5 if queen d2 then I, tr I trade on d2 when the king has to take otherwise you lo lose d4 so that should be completely fine for black and if bishop d2 um, then just queen b6 is played with a nice attack and on d4 and b2 and if bishop c3 um, maybe knight g5 to defend the pawn or is an option or just sacking on e5 uh, to gain quick attack on the bishop with pawn at b4 there are some options there to consider at least i thought i should have an, a position where i can play a couple of moves okay but he went f3 um, let's stop that opening discussion he went f3 and i went knight at, knight at f5 i wasn't too happy with knight at f5 after a couple of moves so you can see also in the third game i, I play another move here on move eight um the idea behind, uh, behind knight at f5 is if he takes on e4 i take on e3 he takes my queen i take his queen and i have nice entry squares for my bishop on f2 or queen at e3 and i felt like 
mm, that's probably a good position for black but of course he can trade but now I get a free developing move so I also was pretty happy with this e.9 to g3 back and here I should have just gone for e6 to open up my bishop to b4 um, but I went bishop g6 which is also I guess a fine move but e6 was just uh, more accurate he takes on e4 I take back and he goes pawn f3 again I go bishop g6 now and now now okay now the position is kind of okay for black I feel like because um, the most important thing here is that white has no pieces in hand so my queen is fine on, on d5 I can go e6 rook d8 bishop b4 and um, I have just natural looking moves and I can even use these pieces in hand when necessary um, oh sorry about this he goes knight h3 to go knight f4 obviously to gain some attack on the light square so I respond uh, with e6 <coughs> to give my king some space and to develop the bishop he goes knight f4 I got queen a5 could also just move, drop the queen back but this is way more active it gives him a couple of options he may have to block if he blocks with c3 knight at c2 becomes an option if he blocks with the bishop um, I can go queen b6 again to her sd4 and if he blocks with the queen I can maybe even trade or go bishop b4 just a lot of options for him to consider and he goes with the well the most active one maybe you can call it and that's king f2 so I just go rook d8 here and note that I'm not really threatening to take here at least I felt like not I was not going to take there because he just takes back trade queens and my back rank is really weak but uh, in the later stage I'm, I'm, I want to take on d4 and go something like bishop c5 and also rook d8 is just a developing move just a nice move he takes on g6 and I don't don't really like that decision because now I get a lot of extra pieces in hand he attacks my queen but now the bishop is only covering d4 so it's also not I'm not really worried about that and again note that he has no pieces in hand so I go um, I, I was going to go something like knight f5 next pawn at h4 maybe first and just arrest his position um, he probably felt like okay let's try to get active maybe something like this but this allows a trick which is knight at g4 um, threatening the bishop so you have to take and I take his knight and now this is just going to be devastating as you can see uh, we are both below 30 seconds here so the level of play is going down a bit but uh, I feel like um, black is just in the driver's seat here I felt like this queen sacrifice was pretty safe to go for because if he goes to d2 bishop at e3 forces him back to e1 uh, as well as this these three pieces are just defending my king really nicely and there's just no attack for for white so it was pretty safe to go for this queen sacrifice uh, here I should maybe go for bishop at h4 to um, make him use one of his blockers if he takes the knight after bishop at h4 there's knight e3 forking the queen so that probably was a better move but I just played it a bit more safe now I do see bishop at h4 uh, pawn at f4 is kind of a kind of a bad move but uh, again taking account that this is the first game of a match so probably some nerves going on here as well for me um, not not finding the optimal moves and knowing that John is a very quick player I decided to not uh, not be around the the below five seconds mark but it, do it does give him uh, some options to defend here okay so I'm just going to play through these moves I'm going pawn d2 to to gain a queen and now I'm going to attack b2 I think rook at b1 was okay here for for um, for white I would have sacked on a1 and go rook at d2 anyway but now it's just a free rook and we see the same same idea um, 
and now I find checkmate with uh, pawn at d3 and queen f3 to mate. Okay, but that's just a time scramble since move. Where was it? Well, since here basically, since I sacked the queen, it was kind of a time scramble, so not a lot of time to calculate lines. Um, but in the end, I, I felt uh, like I played it okay and was never really in danger. Okay, so game two. Um, always nice to, to uh, win the first game with black in a match for only 10 games or where you only need f five and a half points um, so now I get to play white and he decides to go knight c6 against my d4 immediately inviting d5 and uh, without a uh, long thought I went for d5 it only took me a couple of seconds followed by knight f3 um, because if you uh, if you take here on uh, f3 which he does you get this really nice setup with um, f2 and f3 which you usually see from the black side uh, like this this is a uh, this is a common position um, and here black is already really happy and he has sacrificed a knight for a pawn but he has a nice king safety with these two pawns and you can see the similarities here but I didn't sacrifice a knight here I'm just even on the knights so I get the same nice defensive setup, I get a free pawn on d5, and I didn't sacrifice a piece. So this is, should be just really good for white, and I was already really happy. As you can see here, it's also hard to find developing moves for for uh, black. He went with g6, there are some problems with d6, then e6 becomes weak. If you go e6, I just trade, and trade queens, and the king is stuck in the center. So yeah, already a really good position for white here. Yeah. So therefore I decided it was okay to go h4. If he if he go, goes h5, g6, f7 becomes a bit weaker. And if he doesn't, I go h5. That's kind of my thought process there. So okay, he goes h5 and then I just go directly against um, um, f7. Let's say if he plays a random move, something like a6, uh, he does. Uh, and I just sack on, sack on f7, he takes and I go bishop d3 and that should be just completely uh, well not winning immediately but it should be a really nice attack for white this knight can maybe jump into g5 the queen can come come help or just a sacrifice on the the bishop from d3 to g6 just looking really nice so he decides to defend f7 I think that's sensible I decide to put more pressure and now he plays e6 um, to make make a couple of trades maybe and to maybe put a pawn on f6 if you can trade this and then maybe he should be fine again um, and here I decide not to develop any further but just to go for a concrete line which is d takes e6 if you take with this pawn g6 falls so you have to take back with this pawn and now I go bishop b5 and bishop b5 was aimed at um, him blocking at c6 trading queens should be good for me um, if he blocks at d7 uh, I had this nice move knight takes e6 f takes e6 bishop g5 and note now he has no blockers so if he blocks with knight at e7 pawn at f6 and if he blocks on f6 pawn at d5 it's just really good so uh, yeah it came in like a bit of a surprise to me he played king e7 but probably it's he also considered this ideas I had so he played king e7 after 20 seconds or something and here I just I could just trade but that develops his pieces so I decide to just develop my pieces first with bishop f3 bishop f4 and now you can also see this d6 square is getting really weak I'm I'm probably already threatening a pawn at d6 sacrifice and then just trade all and the king becomes on d6 now let's say uh, white black makes a random move I just go pawn here takes 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 and the king is on d6 with no defenders around him and this should be um, should be completely winning maybe there's even a force checkmate here already 
with something like pawn c5 and queen at c7. So yeah, I felt like this was really strong for me. <clears throat> so he, he went bishop takes c3 to put a knight on d5. And now um, I could have gone bishop at e5 to, to renew threats on taking on c7 or going pawn at d6. That would have been a strong move as well, but I went for another strong move. I felt like bishop takes g7, covering the retreat of the king, keeping the king in the center. And also, if knight takes f4, there is a nice, nice move, which is pawn at f6, checkmate. So that was covered, so he went pawn at f6. And now I just took the rook and I took on c7. If you take back these and just pawn at c pawn d6 is really strong, almost mating. So he went bishop d7 to get this rook defending the back rank as well. I pushed the king to f8 and now I went rook at h7. And rook at h7 forced him to resign. If he takes, I just win the queen, and then I sack on f6, and there's just a really strong attack going on there. Mm, and if he moves the queen, there's a checkmating sequence. Pawn d7, knight takes e7, takes e7, I take back, and uh, now queen d6, or just queen takes d7, king of 8, bishop d7 is checkmate. Okay, so 2-0 uh, here. And next game, um, we get into the same line. So knight of 6, knight c6, knight d5, and knight e4, which is going to be... And again, a6, um, probably not the best move, but in terms of match strategy, it is completely fine, because um, last game I got, got an okay position. I realized that I should have played queen a5 instead of uh, the knight, knight at f5 on move 8. And um, then I felt like, okay, I've, I have an okay position there, so why not go for it again? So he went for knight of g3 again, I, I got queen d5, he went f3, and I um, played queen a5 after some, a little thought. And he went for king f2 again, and here already black should be okay after he takes f3 and, and knight, knight of d5 just harassing here um, he went bishop c1 really passive move but defense b2 so that's probably some of the ideas here and also if you leave it to a d2 probably pawn d3 is following and here I have a really strong move um, I'll let you try to figure it out I play, played e6 but that's that's not the move so if you want to figure it out um, uh, put the video on pause and uh, I'll tell it afterwards so yeah the, the the best move here probably is pawn at e3 because there's a really nice idea behind this takes 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 and knight takes e5 N and just blows up the king's defenses if you take there's of course queen takes e5 and now you have the bishop that can come to b6 or c5 with check uh, the queen can take on b2 the black king is completely fine so this is just a really strong position for black already out of the opening but i missed i missed pawn d3 or at least i did spot i did spot that this was an okay position for black but i didn't see the continuation here knight takes e5 when i was thinking about it at this moment but knight takes e5 is just a really strong move so I played e6 to go knight takes d4 and bishop c5 basically, um, winning the queen. So he played c3 to the, to cover d4, but that allowed this knight sacrifice for two pawns. d4 is hanging, a1 is hanging, pawn c2 might be a threat. Uh, and to summarize, I was just really happy here with black. The only thing. Uh, I wasn't that happy about this, that cost me a lot of time, because I was uh, al already more than a minute behind. But the position is strong, so yeah, that then the time invest in investment was okay. So he went knight e2, dropping the rook. I don't know it, what's the best move here, I just felt like black was already close to winning here. 
So he dropped the rook and he went pawn h6 for h6 to try to generate some counterplay. And here I found uh, a really nice move, at least I felt like I felt really happy about finding this move. And it's pawn at e3. And because if you take on h6, uh, knight at f6 comes. Um, so let's just not allow that. And um, what I wanted to do is uh, lure the bishop to e3 and then queen takes d1. And if the king takes on d1, the bishop is really safe on g7. There's no pawn at h6. So that's that's the idea of blocking off the bishop's scope, pawn at e3. So he takes with the king, realizing that stepping back probably won't won't help him either. And now I have pawn b2, he takes on g7, and now I just take back calmly, and the bishop is completely fine on g7. I have this check as well to save it, if necessary, for example, if he goes here. Um, so he, he goes knight e4, try to create some counterplay, I guess. But now the, the black attack is just... Um, uh, gaining momentum, attacking d4 and c1 here, and just straight on c1 to gain a knight for f5. And here I push the king back to f2, g1. And here, here there's a really there an, a lot of moves to win here. But um, I invite you to again pause the video and find the strongest move here. And um, yeah, if you succeeded, congratulations. I think the strongest move here is queen takes e1. Why? Because it knight at f4 mates. So he has to block this mating threat, and now you can just take the queen. And this is completely winning for white. Probably, if you let the computer think, think for a couple of seconds, he will already tell you it's forced mate in a couple of moves. Uh, for example, knight at, knight at e1, it's probably mating very quickly, or queen takes f3, I guess. I didn't spot uh, this, this, so I played rook, rook at e1 um, to just win the queen, basically. Um, so he played bishop at c3, and now I did spot it. So I took the knight and he resigned. Of course, rook at e1 is not losing. Black is, has just an overwhelming position anyway, but queen takes e1 was a really killer move there. Okay, so 3 0 up, um, and I start with d4 again, seeing if he wants to repeat lines. Uh, and he does. So I'm completely happy to go into the to go into this again. And here he played knight g6 instead of taking trying to deviate but I think if you wanted to deviate he should not just play knight c6 because this is just a bad line for black at least in intense in, in terms of match strategy um, because I had a very comfortable play last game so just try to deviate as black there and as you can see I'm I'm going for this h4 idea again pushing the knight back um, it might have been an option to leave it here, go something like this, uh, sorry, to sacrifice the knight. But he goes back, creating a very passive position. Um, already he lost the right to castle. I have this nice pawn on h5. I have a knight nicely developed with some options, and he has his king not being able to castle anymore and his knight on e7 blocking his bishop and if black gets some time he could develop nicely i guess but already i feel like white is better here um i could have gone for a quick attack here with knight e5 and trying to go at f7 but um yeah well let's let's at least check this one you could say okay well you win the queen you put the queen here with check and you win the knight but there is queen at d2 that's at least one problem solved basically developing another piece since you probably have to trade here 
and now the bishop can come out so that's no problem but i thought maybe maybe allowing queen at a five uh, is unnecessary defense f7 uh, as well as attacking the knights and c2 and i just felt like well this probably gives him some counterplay and that's not necessary so i just decided to develop um normally with knight c3 and bishop f4 and g5 and he went uh king e8 here oh sorry about that yeah, he went king e8 here uh, probably because he was scared of of some checks on the d file as well as knight d5 but now just bishop f4 attacking c7 um one important line here is that you have to see that the queen f4 doesn't really fork uh, queen b4 doesn't really fork the bishop on f4 and b2 because you can just take here and now you threaten mate in one and then you can deal with this threat so yeah he decided to defend the pawn i think you had to if you defend the pawn you have to go pawn at d6 because queen at the edge just invites rook d1 and now you have to go pawn at d6 which he did anyway and now you have your queen so let's just quickly uh, look at this position and think why it's so good for white this knight has basically moved this way and is in the way of his own pieces and the queen is back on the square and he has moved his two pawns white has a queen in hand has a pawn on h5 has three pieces developed even the rook developed which is normally something you don't get to do in crazy house that often so white is just an overwhelming position here so it was so i was also really happy and i just decided to go for e4 um not go after f7 just yet maybe next move just develop some pieces and now he went a6 probably to prevent something here but now i couldn't resist going for knight g5 and sacking on h7 but probably i should have just continued developing here even more because his position is still really bad um in terms of developing options but i went for for something concrete uh, of course you cannot take here because knight f6 is checkmate so you have to take with the rook and now i thought okay i get a nice position but actually um, uh, black can sacrifice the rook here and now uh, white has to be careful a bit because uh, the, uh, the dark squares around the king are actually w very weak and also the knight entry square on g4 is not covered so yeah probably taking on h7 is giving the, the, the knight sacrifice here is a bit premature white probably is still better but I could have played it a bit more patient but it's that's a really hard to to be patient in crazy house but it does pay out sometimes so he goes bishop here uh, the knight was aimed at g7 but also defending g3 and now i decide to go rook at g8 after a half a minute thought something like that and if he goes pawn d2 i'm just going to take it um and uh, let's see something like this and now knight takes g7 is threatened um the, the knight entry squares is okay is blocked queen g5 i just go bishop here and the, the knight is covered the, the g7 is still attacked uh so i felt like that should be okay for white this this line and john agreed with me so he didn't go for pawn on d2 but he went for knight f6 instead attacking rook and knight but this invites uh, a nice idea. I could have could have gone knight g4 immediately, but I decided to go rook takes h6. Um, maybe queen takes f2 here is an is an idea, but I felt like mm, black should be or white should be completely fine after that knight g4. Uh, just even king up maybe, but king e2 and king d2, king c1 is also an option since there is no bishop coming at e3 to cover the retreat but he just he quickly took back uh, almost immediately 
and now when knight g4 preventing the sacrifice uh, attacking the queen uh, for example queen queen here bishop at f6 should also work here i guess but even rook takes g6 is also a nice option there but he went queen g7 not allowing the, the rook sacrifice but that of course gives me a free queen and now i come in with bishop at f6 checkmating here queen at g8 ideas and he decided to resign here because he didn't feel like going on and i think white is indeed completely winning this game okay so here i'm 4-0 up a bit unexpected maybe for myself at least i thought it would be a bit harder but basically with two times d4 knight c6 he gave me he gave me two very easy white games um and the black games were a bit harder could have gone both way both ways so next um game i'm again black and here um we get the same line and here he deviates with bishop d3 and now he kind so kind of proves the the idea that he, he's trying to prove that a6 is a waste waste of time so i think this is a good choice by him to deviate f3 is a bit risky i think castling first and then f3 maybe uh maybe a good option because it gives me the option of to go queen h4 here um of course bishop f2 takes uh, if g3 uh, i didn't know for sure what i was going to do but at least i saw this one knight takes g3 if you take here i win the rook so knight takes g3 and uh, pawn at g2 rook g1 that could this is a sample line could be fine for black i don't know so that's an option but of course also just queen h3 is also an option here i guess or maybe even knight takes c3 then knight g2 i think it's just dangerous for white to go g3 that's uh, basically the conclusion here um so we went king f1 logical and i took here he took back and i took on d3 and went knight f5 to threaten here and also um an idea i, I later on I forgot is that the knight can go to g3 and there's this so that was also the reasoning about uh, around knight f5 he went bishop g1 and fighting bishop at e3 and this is a really um, nice idea because you cannot take it of course um, because that's made in two moves and also it will be hard to um to take back the bishop if if i take the bishop if you take with the rook you open up h2 and uh, queen f2 mate so yeah already a tough position and he went for bishop at g3 and here i should really just take it wait check if you take here i can take the rook i forgot about that and if you take here i can probably take this one and this is just a really nice position for for black if you take like this i can even sacrifice the queen here to go knight e3 and there's a lot of ideas but i just forgot about uh, this pin of the h pawn and i went queen d8 i think uh, let's see what i did yeah or queen e7 maybe to go queen a3 i don't know and here wh uh, white is taking over i feel like because now he has rook takes b7 ideas to check and pick up the rook again um so white is gaining some initiative here so he takes the bishop i move the knight back he defends e3 and here i could go knight takes e5 since um the queen is undefended if you take back but um yeah that does allow uh, a queen trade and then he can take on c7 and my king gets a bit opened so i didn't go for it i went bishop at b6 to defend c7 it this this move of course invites rook takes b6 
and I don't know if allowing that is really strong but again I, I also thought well if I get a rook on b2 there might be some chances here so he goes bishop h3 to harass my knight and to go knight at d6 next making use of the fact my king is still in the center and now I go rook at b2 because I spotted this idea of if he moves the bishop I can take on e2 and if you take he went king of one but if you take back knight c takes um just wins the queen uh, oh sorry about this wins the queen and probably the game as well so we went king of one and uh, note that we are both uh, around 20 seconds here and here i had a very weird um i don't know wh what to call it a very weird idea I didn't even remember what I was seeing here, but I went rook takes a2, and that's just a complete blunder giving away the rook, and there is no attack left, or some attack left, but not much to to speak about. And the queen is helping to defend here, so here I was just making, and rook takes a2, I was making some bad moves after it as well. I was just, he was trying to flag me as well, moving really quickly. And I made a lot of mistakes here. So uh, I'll just go through these moves. And already you can uh, see there's a little material in my hand and a lot of material in his hand. So if he can get safe, he should be completely winning. So now he's trying to go to f for the attack. I, I panic a bit, move the king to not allow knight f6. And here already I think um, white is winning. I tried to uh, to confuse a bit uh, in the time time scramble, maybe get something going. But uh, um, John Stuckey plays it really nice here, uh, realizing I have no pieces in hand, no blockers. And here he finds a checkmate sequence with pawn d6. Um, Knight takes d6 would also have been good, I think, because knight a7 is a nice move here. Let's see if it if I take back with the rook, knight, knight at a7 is made. So I have to take back with the queen, but then you just win the queen. But he went knight takes c4 to, to gain extra material. And he was just pushing me on the clock as well, probably not finding the best moves here. And here, um, white has a nice checkmate in, yeah, in. I think it's officially four moves, but um, in basically it's two moves. And uh, you can pause the video if you would like to check it for yourself. But the the move here, or at least some something in the sequence, is rook a1. So you could go bishop here first, and then rook a1. Now officially I can block here still and like this uh, and the game went, went uh, slightly different. He went rook a1 first and I blocked on a4 and he played bishop at b4 checkmate. So John is on the board here winning his, his, his white game um, but I wasn't really worried because next game I get white again and uh, it was going really well with, for, with me with white so I have the chance here to get uh, on match point um, five five one ahead, so the score is now four one for me, and I get white. I play d four again, and he plays e six, um, and uh, I I knew John had um, had this idea in in the French opening to to go for a quick bishop b four and knight g seven, and um, I think with correct play that's just um, a really nice opening for white so I, I decided to go for e4 and not, not my normal knight of 3 g3 stuff here so he went bishop b4 and uh, with knight of 3 knight g7 and it's all going like I um, it's not like I prepared this very deeply but I just felt like okay he's probably going to go for this knight g7 then I go bishop d3 castles e5 and I should have a nice position because this knight on g6 isn't going uh, isn't going anywhere. So I castled, he, go, he goes d5 to challenge the center, I go e5. And now 
what is this knight doing here? It, it basically wants to be on f5, but that will take a couple of moves. Um, oh, he doesn't take on e5, he takes on d4 first. Uh, and then he takes on e5 to activate the knight, but it gives me a knight in hand. So already white is up material. And also note that um, John took more than a minute to uh, get to this position. This, this again, I'm feeling very happy here with white. I go knight h5 to harass uh, this one. Uh, if rook g8, bishop takes h7. Uh, so bishop f8 is the move to defend here. But that again makes a piece very passive. So I go bishop f4. Um, I think um, um, it was slightly better to include bishop b5 here. Bishop b5. So not allowing this one. Because let's say bishop d7, uh, rook, rook e1 is really strong. Uh, I analyzed this a bit and I think this is yeah this is just devastating let's say something like this knight takes d5 and white is just completely winning already bishop of 4 is not not a bad move but I think bishop b5 first followed by rook e1 was a better idea so he, he goes bishop b6 to cover c7 this was some some idea and here um you can pause the video again to find uh, uh, the the best move in the position, or at least a really strong move in the position. Um, and that move is 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 knight takes d5. I'll, I'll show the idea. If you take with with the pawn, rook e1, um, and there's a no good way to block. Basically. Let's uh, let's check this one. Knight out of six takes six. Checkmate. Um, no, all right. Next one. Knight of five, pushing on g7. How are you going to defend this? Rook g8, pawn d7, something like this. Uh, and there are other options, of course, but this is just uh, to show you how strong rook e1 actually is. Um, blocking on e4, probably just takes threaten to take here again with all the all the same threats as before but even stronger so that was knight takes d5 uh, e takes d5 and the other one is of course queen takes d5 knight at f6 takes takes wins the queen and the game because if you take the knight queen here picks up the rook so this is just really strong for uh, for white Okay, but I went knight of three. Um, didn't spot spot this uh, this knight takes d5 idea. Uh, note by the way uh, that, that if you take the bishop, c7 hangs. That's the that's the thing I forgot to tell. So, but I went knight of three, and still white has a really nice position here. Um, more pieces developed, uh, piece up even for for a couple of pawns. Knight here, knight here, attack on f7. Uh, the position plays itself rather easily. So he he goes at g6, and I go bishop g5. Uh, and I like bishop g5. If you take here, I win the queen, of course. And it's hard to find a block blocking idea. For example, pawn at f6 to preserve your pawn structure like this. I just take and go pawn g7. And this is uh, looking already r again really good for white. Something like this. Uh, yeah, this is. There are other options, of course, again, but it's just not working. So he blocks on e7, but now you see a problem uh, occurring. White uh, white has a knight in hand. Black has no pieces in hand. So I'm just immediately going to second f7. And I've told this before in many of my videos. Um, the second f7. Uh, well. Sacrificing on f7 or the attack on f7 is much more stronger if f8 isn't available for the king. And now f8 isn't available as well as e7, so it's just it's this is probably already winning for for white by force. Um, so he tries f6. Since uh, yeah, it's kind of a funny move because I have no pawn, 
I could have gone queen a4 here, but I think bishop d7 then saves the game for a couple of more moves. So I went knight takes f6 to, pr to get the pawn. Only move to continue the game is e takes. If he g takes, pawn f7. So he went e takes f6. Uh, I went pawn f7, of course. King e7 only move. And here I have a couple of options. I can go knight at g8, but I just spotted that knight at c6 uh, wins the queen. And then... Uh, then it should be completely over. So John also realized that and resigned the game here. Uh, so uh, now I am five one. Um, still not win, not. Uh, still John can win the match here if he wins all, all the next games. But um, he has to be really careful because a draw will be enough for me to win the match here. But he has white again, and last white game he won. So uh, he might uh, repeat lines, and he does. So I do play a6 again. Uh, maybe I should have deviated. I think if if the situation was not 5-1 for me, I probably devi should have deviated. But uh, the queen h4 line actually was okay for me. I th so I went for this again, but now he castled first before going f3. I still go queen h4, a bit of a loose move, um, maybe, but it, yeah, there are some ideas of knight takes on knight g4. So it goes f3, mm, I guess that's the correct move. So I, I basically try the same stuff to uh, attack the dark squares quickly. I take his knight, and here I think he just take my queen. Uh, and take this one and be better but he takes this one back and now I get bishop at g6 in to cover some squares um, around my king and I feel like bishop at g6 is useful is, is usually a very useful move he goes rook b1, rook b8 this is usually a, a good inclusion for white because there are some tricks here later on as I explained uh, before or a bishop on a4 as well. So it goes knight at f4, and I go bishop at b5. And bishop at b5 is well, provoking rook takes b5. Mm, and I don't know if it, it was best, but I, I felt it hard to, to find, find a good move here. So I just tried bishop at b5, so maybe I can I can sack here a bit and go knight f5 again. I don't know. Uh, but I've... Uh, yeah, I just went for this and I thought, okay, I have to defend for a while. Move the queen back. I'm moving it back to d d8 now because um, I think it's useful to defend d5 here because there will be maybe some c4 ideas later on. And indeed, uh, he tries to go after d5 with queen b3, queen b3, b4, c4. He does allow uh, this though, but I think... Uh, there's a skewer here, so he sacks the queen, but I think white is still really good here. Um, and I think the best move actually is d5. Uh, he plays pawn at d5, but that j he, he could just play d5 here uh, to preserve the pawn and to keep attacking. But there are some there are some issues for white to consider and I think um, well I quickly analyzed it with, with the computer and the computer says that pawn d3 now black is almost taking over again and he, he, he just thinks d5 is better so you have the pawn in hand for attacking uh, purposes later on so here um, d takes e6 um, I have to take back because pawn, pawn d7 is just uh, going to win if I don't um, let's say if I take here uh, pawn d7 if I don't sack the queen I'm just mated so I have to sack the queen there and then probably white is uh, white has a checkmating sequence so I have to, I felt like I have to take back so I took back pretty quickly and um, I wasn't really that scared for uh, knight takes g6 uh, let's just play some some moves Something like this, pawn f7, I take, knight g5, I sack my queen, I take, 
and I I felt like this was completely fine for uh, for black. Um, and probably uh, computer analysis will show that it, it indeed is fine for black. You could try this one, uh, but I just block here. Next, I take here or queen at d1 or something like that. I think even blocking on a five is possible as well. But this is a bit more risky because you have to calculate these lines. But again, this should be fine. So that was my thought process there. That's okay if he takes the bishop. He doesn't take the bishop, he defends his knight by retreating it. But now I can take over because d4 is hanging. Uh, and there are problems on e2 uh, arising. Uh, yeah, this knight can maybe move to c2 as well to arrest the dark squares. Just a lot of issues for him to think about here. Um, so he went rook at d2 and note note that I was already on half a minute, but now he also is around half a minute. So he took a lot of time here and now we are entering the time scramble. And it's nice that he is in time trouble as well. So I went pawn d2. Felt like a natural move. He goes rook a1. Um, and here maybe queen at f1 wasn't the best move, but it, it felt like it was the most concrete one going for this attack. So these moves seem kind of forced. I go rook at b1 here. Took me some time to find rook at b1. So I, I put myself in some more time scramble. And here I may make a blunder with knight at c2. Um, I th should have just taken here. It's a bit. It looks a bit risky, mm. but um, it, it should be completely fine for uh, for for black. I was maybe a bit scared about this line, but I think I can just even take the the, the rook there. Maybe there's even some sort for some forcing sequence with knight takes g3, but I think if I just take the rook, I am uh, going to sit to be alive as well here. But maybe maybe queen at d5 or something. I just saw some some really strong threats for white. If I take e6, e6, I don't know. Maybe you can survive this. Um, so I went knight at c2 to put pressure on 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 these two pieces. But bishop takes d4 here, uh, and and white is actually. Um, um, getting back into the game. He has all the pieces in hand and black has nothing. Okay, but he didn't see bishop at d4, takes d4, he went um, pawn d6 and now I can take a free piece. And here I, I invite you again to find the best move for black. So if you want you can pause the video here. Um, it's a li really nice idea here. The idea is to go uh, knight takes f3. If you if you fought rook takes e1, that's also fine, because the the idea is kind of interposed. But knight takes f3 is a little bit more forcing, and white has to go king h1 here, um, and then you can just pick up the rook. Why do you have to go king h1? Because if you take, I take the rook. Uh, if you block, rook takes f1 is made, so you have to take the rook. Now knight at h3 because you took the knight on e1. King moves, checkmate. And that killer knight takes f3, I missed completely. Um, probably it's understandable because I had, I had uh, like 11 seconds here. But it's a nice, nice idea uh, to show you. I went for bishop at c5 to feel to go for something like this, but not spotting the mating idea I just showed. But just some, some checks and the bishop defending a bit as well. I just played this on intuition. Um, knight takes f3 is still really good, still, but I just didn't see it. Here I go, knight takes e2, knight g4, and here I sack my queen because I felt like there was a mate there, but I missed the mate. Um, because here there's just a checkmate in a few moves. Again, you can you can pause the video to find it yourself. It, it's uh. It's in three moves, I think. I think. I played rook g1, uh, but that's not the, that's not in three moves. Uh, the obvious one is this one. If you move the king, 
rook at f1 is made. So you take just rook at f2, takes, takes, block, wins. And even one move quicker, I think, pawn here. If you move rook at f1, if you take rook at f2. So, yeah, uh, it's a bit sad I missed that opportunity to win the match here with a quick check made in three. But, uh, yeah, I think four seconds, even then I should be able to see it, but I was panicking a bit here because of the clock, I think. So I'm, I'm playing some, uh, playing a bunch of random moves just to not, not flag. And I missed a lot of checkmates here, I feel like. Again, something like knight of b4 is just way better. Uh, let's just let's just move to these moves, because there's an there's a funny uh, funny line coming up, which I wanted to show you. Um, if you take here, uh, uh, pawn d2 wins the game. That's what that's something I I spotted. Um, and if you take the knight, bishop takes, uh, blocker, doesn't really matter, take the blocker, checkmates. So that was something I was going for, but he took here, and now I have the opportunity to win the match. Um, and note that I say win the match and not win the game. Maybe that's a hint for you. You can check check yourself if you can find uh, how to win the match here as black. Um, the correct move is here, rook c2. King b1, only move, rook b2. If you move to a1, knight c2 is checkmate. And if you move to c1, perpetual check. <laughs> and that would have been a really nice way to finish the match. <laughs> because uh, I was on 5 points and I would have been on 5.5 if I had spotted this. Um, but again, yeah, low time. And uh, let's just move to the rest of the game. He defends uh, c2 and he just takes all material and I, d I decide to resign here. Because I uh, just don't see any moves again for, for me and I'm still playing on my increment. So I resigned here. Uh, next game I, I got white. Uh, let me flip the board. So I got white again. Um, and he um, went for the same line, but I decided to go for my pet pet setup with bishop g2 for once, and decided to go for a quick h4, h5 again. And he uh, goes for knight of 8 and I play knight e5 to prevent him from going for a quick e5 himself and opening up s stuff against my king. Um, and he went knight d7. So again, uh, he had this, oh, sorry about this one. He had this long route of developing his pieces. And I just take on c6. And now his knight is again in the way of a lot of stuff. And um, white is probably uh, better here as well. Note again his time usage in, in the black game. So I play h6 and take g7 to open things up, and then I go e4 to um, open up the queen, as well as considering e5 and pushing on f6, and just um, maybe if he takes, my knight gets active as well, with a lot of strong strong squares. The bishop opens up. e4 just seemed very useful. He goes h5. Um, maybe he wanted to go like this. I don't really know, but pawn at h6 probably missed by him and that's just a really strong move because this piece has nowhere to go he goes bishop of six to take back and then might maybe he can consolidate a bit since i have only two knights in hand and he can put pawns on the board but i decided to not allow bishop takes of g7 and go e5 he sacks his knight and now again i can take here but then he can consolidate maybe because i only have one sort of piece the knight so I decide to attack the bishop, even at the cost of a knight. Because again, the bishop here opens up and the knight opens up to f6, so he even doesn't take it. Now, now he moves the knight back to f5, and I take on h5. And here, um, 
uh, look at the time, I'm again more than a minute up. Here John decided to resign the match, the game and also the match. So he could have gone something like this uh, to continue the game. And I think um, this should be uh, alright for uh, for black actually. Um, white is probably a bit better but this this looks like it's it's playable still for for black but uh, i think he was just a bit disgusted with his play i think queen takes h5 is even not even the best move but i think uh, with the time situation and um, the other black games he just decided to, to resign the match um yeah i put these these empty games here in for fun <laughs> to give not give you the suggestion that this was going to be the last game um but indeed this this was the last game the match was 6-2 for me and um yeah we decided not to play the the remaining of the games we could have done that but uh we just decided to call it gg just um just an overall recap i, I won all my white games um so i'm really happy with that and also with uh with the queen d5 games the first uh, two black games where where when queen d5 um let's see this one especially this one i i really liked um this idea of queen d5 queen a5 in terms of match strategy it was just uh, it was just nice to repeat this opening um and after those two black wins he did he did gain uh ga gain uh, an advantage in game game five and game seven in game seven i missed uh missed uh, a really nice chance to win the match with this uh, perpetual idea but uh yeah uh, not to worry there because in with my white games i was just uh, being superior this match okay um i hope you enjoyed this uh, this recap video it's a bit different than i um, do uh, normally with live streams just posting them on youtube but uh yeah uh, hopefully this uh, this is a nice change of pace and if you uh, like the video um, please comment uh, or give suggestions to what you want to see in some other instructional videos i hope you have a really nice day and uh, i'll see you next time <laughs>